Spoilers, warning. This video covers content from Makoto Shinkai's 2019 film, Weathering With You. Throughout Weathering With You, it is made apparent how constant rainfall takes its toll on people, both physically and mentally. People limit their time outdoors, streets are flooded, events are canceled, and overall, people feel drained. They feel like they've lost their springs and summers, and desperately want more sun. This is why sunshine girls are so admired, because they can bring sunlight simply by praying. Yet at the same time, it is why they can be taken for granted. It is implied in the film that most people would be okay with a sunshine girl being sacrificed in exchange for better weather, as if asserting that self-sacrifice is morally accepted for sunshine girls. This creates an internal struggle with Hina Amano. As a 100% sunshine girl, which is fitting because her name means daylight greenery, she gladly brings sunshine to make others happy, but harbors an obligation that she has to do this, even at the cost of her life. One of Hina's internal conflicts revolve around lacking a purpose in life. After her mom passed away, she and her younger brother, Nagi, have been living alone together for a year. Hina stopped going to school and focused her time on working multiple jobs to pay for their living expenses. Without having parents around for her, Hina had to do everything herself. She bears all the responsibilities of an adult and doesn't enjoy the full life of a teenager. Her caretaker attitude shows. She gives Hodaka a free burger, comforts him after he criticizes himself for nearly killing someone, insists that she cooks for him, and lies to him about being older than him, which sets up an implicit expectation that he doesn't have to worry about her, and that she's the one to handle responsibilities. As someone who focuses on others, she lacks a purpose for herself. But it's through Hodaka who also struggles finding a place in society, that she finds a role in life. Like Hina, Hodaka struggled finding a place in society. Both feel restricted by their age. Where Hina lies about her age to get jobs, Hodaka is constantly berated by employers for being too young for a job. Where Hina is questioned by police for living without a guardian, Hodaka is questioned by local authorities for being on the streets without a guardian. Luckily for Hodaka, he reluctantly seeks out Kei for a job, after previously rejecting. It's through his writing job with Kei and Natsumi that he realizes something about himself. My days were well, hectic, but for the first time in my life, someone counted on me, and it was nice. After seeing Hina's power, he suggests to her that they could look to service it to others especially since Hina just got fired from her job. While initially hesitant if she can pull it off, with the support of Hodaka and Nagi, Hina succeeds in bringing sunlight for local businesses, to which she starts finding a purpose for herself. Through the trio's first service for Sunshine For You, we're shown Hina's radiant face after the people around show so much joy for seeing sunshine. She's overjoyed that her ability to bring sunshine gave people so much happiness. The human mind works in mysterious ways. Sometimes you just need to see the sun shining in the morning to feel energized. A blue sky can make you feel happy that you're alive. The lyrics of the song, Celebration, playing throughout the Sunshine Girl job montage, express someone's reclusive feelings of being alone, then being enchanted by the light of feeling special by someone else calling their name. This describes Hodaka's unimpressive gray life prior to meeting Hina, whom he feels shines like light and starts to grow feelings for. And at the same time, the lyrics describe Hina feeling special herself as a result of being with Hodaka. She is grateful to Hodaka because through him helping her use her powers to make others happy, she has finally found a purpose in her life, a discovery worth celebrating. I think that I'm in love. Huh? The 
this job, the Sunshine Girl. It's like, for the first time in my life, I found a purpose. But the rain keeps coming back, and Hina grows more tired with each use of her power. It's a sorrowful situation full of irony. As Hina brings more sunshine, the rain backlashes stronger as a result. And to fix the weather, it's to sacrifice Hina, who brings sunshine herself. Just after finally finding a purpose in life, Hina is informed by Natsumi that she's to become a human sacrifice. For the sake of others, she bears the entire weight of the weather by herself. And Hodaka, smited by his feelings for Hina, is oblivious of her burden. The two confessions scene presents a dichotomy between what's been weighing on their minds. Hina, I- Hodaka. Oh, sorry. Uh, I- While Hodaka looks to confess his feelings, Hina looks to confess her distress over her body slowly disappearing. Hodaka is so taken by Hina that he subconsciously refuses to consider any possibility of losing her, even suggesting that they all run away together. Despite the growing weather crises, he remains obstinate about Hina being connected to the sky, while she continues feeling pressured about her fate. If you could fix this crazy weather with one human sacrifice, I'd be fine with it. Everyone would. Kay likely says this out of stress with the weather, as he wants custody of his daughter. I believe this scene is using Kay's insincere statement to point out what Hina's internal conflict is. She likely believes that people would be content with her sacrifice, as it'll fix the weather. Hina knows the value of the weather to people. Even to herself, she received her powers as a result of praying with all her heart for sunshine again for her mother. I spent the entire day before praying for good weather. I wanted to have one last walk under the sun with my mom. With Hina nearly set on accepting her sacrifice, she wonders if there might be a reason to stay. Hey, can I ask you something? Uh, Would you like the rain to stop? Ah, uh, uh, yes, yeah. Hodaka quickly expresses how much he values the clear skies. After all, he's been overjoyed with how he's felt being with Hina under clear blue skies. And so, he realizes too late the burden that Hina carries, which ultimately leads Hina to accept her sacrifice. It's by waking up to Hina's disappearance and seeing the clear blue skies that Hodaka realizes his own foolishness. We see a dichotomy between people's joy of the sun and Hodaka's guilt that this was only brought about due to the sacrifice of the person he loves. And upon discovering that he knows younger than him, he laments further of how she shouldered all the responsibilities by herself. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Hina. I made you do that sunshine girl job, but in the end, you were the one who had to deal with the consequences! One of the ending songs, We'll Be Alright, expresses Hodaka's thoughts beautifully. It describes how Hodaka is the only one who sees Hina carrying her heavy burden by herself, and he cries because she asks him if he's alright, when she's the one on the verge of collapse. And so he wants to ensure that he helps Hina be alright in the way that she wants to be. Finally understanding the burdens Hina put on herself, Hodaka resolves to take responsibility for what they did, and to make sure Hina understands the value of her own life. With this mind settled, he begs to reunite with her in the sky. While Hina is trapped physically in the skies, she is also mentally constrained to her belief that self-sacrificing is the only decision. But after feeling her life disappearing, she starts panicking with reluctance, unsure of her decision. And through Hodaka's resolve, he reunites with Hina in the skies. While grateful to see him, she remains unconvinced that she should go back home with him, 
as there wouldn't be any more blue skies. But Hodoka corrects himself, firmly confessing that he wants Hina more than any blue sky, that no good weather is worth having without her. It's these words of affirmation that Hina finally resolves to continue living, understanding the value of her own life. The two make their grand escape from the skies, falling back down to the earth together. Following their choice, non-stop rain follows them, slowly drowning the city. Three years later, having not seen Hina since that day, and with much of Tokyo submerged underwater, Hodaka continues reflecting on their decision, deep in thought with how much it's affected Tokyo. He's told that it's not something he should worry about. Taki's grandma suggests that Tokyo is simply returning to what it was before, while Kei's reinforces that the world is crazy, and always will be. They both think that Hodaka and Hina's decision had nothing to do with how things are. People have also adapted to the weather, so Hodaka begins to think that their decision was insignificant, that it didn't matter. But all his doubts are erased upon seeing Hina again, who is praying over Tokyo. Hina's already accepted the consequences of their choice, and while she no longer has her powers, she still recognizes her self-value, understanding that she can continue living and still try to make the weather better. Seeing this hits home for Hodaka, where he realizes that they did change the world. Regardless of whether they think they made the right choice or not, or if they're worried about the future, it's important that they accept their decision and keep moving forward with their lives. Because no matter of what's to come, things will be fine for them. Yeah, I'm fine. You know what, Hina? <laughs> We're gonna be all right. Many thank yous for watching. Until next time, take care.